Hey everyone, today we're going to be ranking all of the designs of the original Dead by Daylight killers. For this list we're going to be considering visual design, sound design, and other factors like how the design links into their lore and backstory. We won't be including the licensed characters into this as Behaviour didn't create them, so I think it's much fairer to rank all of the characters who Behaviour did create against each other, rather than placing them up against other licenses and design teams. It's also worthwhile mentioning that honestly all of the killers in the game are designed very well. In fact, the arts or visual part of the game has always been one of the strongest parts. This is just me ranking my favourites. To do this, we'll put them into one of four tiers. The first is generic design, the lowest tier, then inspired design, great design, and finally near perfect design. Let's get into it. Starting off with generic design. In my opinion, Legion has the most uninspired design in the game, being a generic group of teenagers with bland and also generic masks. I think there are cool aspects to the Legion's design. I think this issue more so is just that their design isn't really unique in terms of horror characters, but also dead by daylight. I do like the idea of them being quite visually normal in appearance, that's kind of the point, but I also think that it only works to an extent. Sound wise, it would be nice to have four different voices, but we only get two. And again, their noises are generally the least impressive in the game. There was potentially a bit more to be done in terms of the four different members of the Legion, but what we got was kind of eh, which I think generally sums the Legion up. Clown is next as a pretty generic looking clown in the context of horror. He's the big grotesque guy with a small clown costume, with the paint on his face slowly splitting off. Again, it's not a bad design because it does look creepy, but in terms of the design itself, it's relatively uninspired in comparison to some of Behaviour's other creations. One of the cooler and more unique features is the fingers that the clown carries around his waist, showing his personality and visually revealing things about him. His noises are honestly quite a good aspect of his character, with them sounding pretty gross and his unhealthy cough and laugh does definitely add character also. But overall, he is still quite generic in appearance. Next up we have Hillbilly. Although I like Hillbilly's design, I think that his design is probably the most similar to his inspiration inspiration of Bubba. His noises are relatively generic, groany, distorted sounds, his weaponry doesn't look overly unique or specific to him, and his look is quite bland and simple. Again, this is the way he's meant to look, but it's definitely not too visually impressive. I do like the metal staples that are pinned across different parts of him and the hair growing in unusual places, but overall Billy is fairly bland and generic with his personality really shining if you look more into his lore. But from the outside, there's nothing much to see. Death Slinger has a relatively generic design with his whole cowboy look. There really isn't anything too unique in his overall clothing, appearance, face, all that kind of stuff. However, there is quite a lot that is unique when it comes to his weapon, the spear gun, which in itself adds quite a bit of personality. There's also the brace across his leg and his limp. You get a certain presence from looking at him, which I think is great. His sounds are also quite normal and not too interesting, the best ones being the spear gun sounds with the chains and the reeling and such. But hey, still probably on the higher end of the generic tier. Okay, on to inspired design. Doctor's design is first up, and it's quite a cool one, but it does very much fall into the crazy doctor trope in horror, with his main uniqueness coming from the craziness occurring through him utilizing electricity. The doctor is crazy, but that's also all he really has going for him to me. His visual appearance is what most doctors would wear, except he's just covered in wires that course electricity through his body. One of the more unique pieces being the metal tearing his face into a constant grip. Some of the better elements of Doctor is his twitchiness due to the current running through him. There's also his laughter, which is kind of great too, especially when you're a survivor and have a high level of madness. Twins, despite having a very unique backstory, have a fairly boring, although fitting, design. The way the two twins are incorporated into the same model is cool, but the whole outfit is just very average. Again, it's kind of meant to be that way, but it still doesn't change too much. The best features are all the scars and scrapes you can see across their bodies, a clear indicator of the sheer amount they've been through. Sound wise, these two are okay. Victor really brings something unique with his screeches and low growling instead of his terror radius. What makes these two still a bit higher than the others is that conceptually and design wise, they do feel quite unique and original, even if I do think a little more could have been done with them. Hag is quite a good design despite having possibly the worst lore in the game. She looks incredibly creepy, but with her backstory included, there's also a lot of tragedy in her appearance. Hag appears to be based off of Wendigos, specifically the Canadian type. 
type, which is where behavior is situated. It seems for Hag they wanted to stay pretty close to the Wendigo's roots, and I respect that to be honest as I think it works well. They combine this with the hexes, visually shown as triangles that are clawed into the ground. All of Hag's sounds are also great too. She has almost animalistic sounds which work in her favor for her creepy appearance and crippled stature. Overall, this is what I would call quite an inspired adaptation of an otherwise relatively well-known monster of folklore. Huntress has a solid design, creating an animalistic character with terrifying weaponry and physical stature. The Huntress has quite a simple design, with her main defining feature being a rabbit mask, a typically innocent and harmless animal, over the face of what is an apex predator of its region, which is a nice little contrast, but also shows the underlying innocence of Anna as a character, who acts purely out of survival and its means. A key feature to the Huntress is also her lullaby, which is actually a real Russian lullaby about a grey wolf coming to grab a child in their bed unless they sleep. The childlikeness of Anna and the brutality despite the seeming innocence makes her character clear just through visuals and sound alone. Okay, on to great design. One reason why I think Blight's design is great is that he's almost entirely built around a lore-driven thing, that being the Blight or the Visceral Cankers, that have made Blight the way he is. It feels like this killer is purely grounded in Dead by Daylight and its lore over some of the others who could be seen elsewhere. Blight was apparently inspired somewhat by Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which I think really shows with the Blight's almost gentlemanly appearance with his nice clothes and regal cane, although torn to pieces by the orange growths covering him, and his jaw flopping from his head. You can clearly see the person he was before despite the monster he has now become, which really does reflect his lore well. His sounds are cool too, and create this urgency to his character as he rapidly darts his head side to side, eager to find more orange plant. This is going to be a controversial one I can tell, but in my opinion, Trickster has a pretty amazing design, and one which Behaviour did actually consult the real K-pop artists and producers to inform. Trickster is nothing like any of the other killers and is one of the most human looking, with his one inhuman feature being his discoloured eyes, which are actually just contacts, a common feature of K-pop artists. Trickster wields a neon bat that makes lightsaber sounds and has a massive razor blade attached, fitting for the twisted guy who wields it. His base look has his yellow jacket and pink trousers, as well as styled hair. Some of the best parts of Trickster's design is his little laughs and small comments he makes throughout the trials as he hunts down the survivors. It adds a lot of uniqueness to him also. Visuals wise, Trickster is probably the most engaging character. Trapper's design in terms of horror in gaming I would say is definitely iconic now as the face of Dead by Daylight. Sure, Trapper's roots are from some of the more well-known slasher characters like Jason Voorhees, but Trapper's design really doesn't just copy that. It makes it its own and is quite unique. His animations are typically quite stiff, from what we can assume is the constant pain he's having to deal with, restricted by the metal entangled with his body. Then there's his mask, made of bone, or more so the skull of a bear. Behind the grin of his mask, made of bone, is a stern and saddened face, which earns him the name of the miserable smiling killer by Benedict Baker. I think that's pretty cool. Everything that the trapper owns is rough, heavy, and made of metal, solidifying where he came from. The injuries over the trapper also add to the lore of the entity, showing us how much of a cruel master it is, and how the trapper despite his dire state is still fighting back. It adds a lot of character without ever saying anything. Out of the three original killers, I think Wraith is probably Behaviour's best design. As the second killer they had to create, they mentioned during his development that they actually struggled greatly, as they realized that they had to make his personality different and unique through visuals primarily. I think they really nailed it, from his pinprick eyes that pierce in a bright white color, to his straight and attentive posture despite his scarred body. There's also his strange supernatural element to him, with branches growing from his head which tilts creepily to one side. His sounds are great too, with his clogged and distorted throat and the rattle of bones as he wields the spine of his former boss as a weapon. In terms of power and a big feature, his bell, there was a comment left on one of my lore videos which I think perfectly describes the Wraith. His personality and the characterization that is shown through simple things like him ringing a bell before coming out of his stealth. Yep, they did a really great job with this guy. Okay, on to near perfect design. When Oni was released, I immediately looked at him and went, wow, that looks cool. Oni's design is based mainly off of Onis from Japanese folklore, following the similar studded armor, Kanabo, three eyes, blue skin, and horns. There's a clear brutality to Oni or just a presence that makes you feel small even though he's only about a foot tall on your screen. <laughs> 
His sounds are awesome too, with this map-wide scream as he bursts into flames and enters his blood fury mode. The stomping of his feet as you hear him approaching, along with the low growl add a lot too. Really this guy is just a huge terrifying mass, but hey it's a well designed mass. His power is shown through his stature, literal power, and also the detailed and intricate armour he wears, showing he's not only strong in this realm but was also strong in the world he used to reside in. The plague's design is great in my opinion because it just feels quite original and unique in comparison to a lot of the other killers who are typically slasher-esque villains. Plague's appearance as an ancient priestess is just a complete contrast and works very well. There's something so tragic about Plague, a loyal servant to a master that has no true love for her or plans for her salvation. Plague carries around her sensor that she uses as her weapon because of how bad she smelt after becoming infected with the plague. She did this to be more presentable to her people and still does despite half of her body crueling with this plague and slowly rotting away her skin and flesh. With all this, however, she remains somewhat calm, keeping up appearances with her straight posture and citing different chants. There's also something so eerie about Plague not being from our time. Plague is very much out of time from the rest of the characters. She's out of touch with the modern day, despite her otherwise quite human appearance. She seems strikingly different. Nurse's design is kind of awesome. There's a certain sadness to Nurse which can be seen clearly throughout her design. She has a slump posture and heavy raspy breathing as she floats ominously her limp feet nearly dragging across the floor as she floats. There's something very chilling about the apparent weakness but clear strength that the nurse has. This is furthered through her power, which she does by folding her hand into a fist as it seems to burn up and go all ashy. This texture is just so good. Then when she blinks, she lets out a pained scream, which again just adds this underlying tragedy to her character. Nurse is a very well-designed killer, visually, sound-wise, and through her animations. Out of the earlier released killers, she is quite the outlier and remains still to this day, with just unique things like her floating, for example. Her design reflects perfectly this pained woman with a desire to rid the world of what she sees as weakness. And it's kinda creepy. Spirit, despite her balance issues, is one of the best designed killers killers in the game in terms of visuals, sound, animations. Everything is just great about Spirit and is also great for reflecting her backstory too. There is something so creepy about the twitchiness of Spirit as her mouth curls up into a smile and then down into a frown in an instant. All whilst her arms jitter about in sharp spasms. She's covered in cuts, some that slice her limbs in two and others that just mark her body. Further pieces of shattered glass cut in also, relaying some pretty dark things for what is one of the younger appearing killers. Then you have the crazy hair the katana that swings out of her arm, the way she phases in and out of another plane as she walks, making pained, angry growls as she does. Everything is just so creepy and so well done. Alright, well that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and please do let me know how you would rank these killers in terms of design also. Thanks, and goodbye.